Now, what you're going to find in today's video is that women leave all men who care about them. What I'm going to be showing you in today's video is the reasons why as soon as you as a man invest emotionally into a woman, you care about a woman, okay? Not only that, you do anything that signals an emotional attachment, what you're going to notice is severe disinterest on her end. You're going to notice worse behavior and I'm even going to show you step-by-step -step advanced tactics how to counter this. So that way you can have somewhat of the leverage in these relationships and in these interactions. And on top of that, you're now going to have strategies by the end of this that 99% of other men don't have. So stick with me because this will be a totally life-changing video. Now, after today's video is over, what I want you to do is go down below. You click the link in the description. I want you to check out the full-length MBT masculine behavioral technique webinar end-to-end -end presentation that I put together for you. Because what I do inside of that is I take you behind the scenes and I show you how you can copy paste MBT masculine behavioral techniques into your dating life too. So that way you can get results at an even quicker pace. Okay. Now today I'm showing you exactly step by step why all women are going to leave men who care about them. Now truthfully, they can't even help it. And I'll show you why in a second. So understand this. If a woman is pulled back, from you, if a woman has exited your life, if a woman has, you know, been with you for a short period of time or saw you for a couple dates and then left, okay, it's due to the fact that you didn't lay your cards correctly. So here's the truth your care is a turnoff to women. Your care, in all ways, shapes, and forms, is a turnoff. And the reason being is because when a man cares about a woman, this starts to register to her brain as pure emotional weakness. Say that with me one more time. 100% pure emotional weakness. Now, why is this pure emotional weakness? Because she starts to doubt the strength of that man. That attachment, that willingness to invest, that, that ability where he seems that he's not self-sufficient and he needs her, this is going to be a turnoff. Women are gauging a man's emotional fortitude 24 seven. You got to understand this. If her eyes are open and if she's awake and if she's breathing and she's looking at you 24 seven, her subconscious is firing just like this, gauging your emotional fortitude. She's constantly testing to see where is this guy's interest? How much does this guy like me? How much is this guy sold on me? How much is this guy invested in me? 24 seven, she's testing your emotional fortitude. She's sitting there going, when is this guy going to go weak for me? And it doesn't matter if you're one month into a relationship. It doesn't matter if you're 15 years into a relationship, 24 seven, she's testing your emotional will, your emotional willpower to not go weak for her, to not go weak for her beauty. So his attachment shows scarcity. Say that with me one more time. His attachment shows scarcity. His willingness to invest in her shows scarcity. Think about this inverse relationship right here. When a woman sees that a man is attached, she links this to scarcity. But on top of that, your willingness to invest on an emotional level also shows scarcity. You got to understand that women know subconsciously, like inside of their hard wiring, that a man operating from options, that a man able to exercise those options typically does not need to emotionally invest due to the fact that he has abundance. So this is extremely important. Not to mention his ability to close off all other options shows a decrease in his SMV, his sexual market value. When you decrease all of your other options by closing off everybody else and you give your full undivided attention and your full access to one woman, this subconsciously puts her on the pedestal. She naturally will say, well, hey, I must be the best he can do. I must be his best option. I must be the girl who's on the pedestal. I must be his favorite because of that. Look at me. Okay. So his ability to close off all other options shows a decrease in sexual market value. Now, what happens when you go down this road, when you go down this road, here's what happens. She starts to doubt his value. She doubts his value in the back of her brain the whole time, the whole time she is subconsciously doubting your value. And the biggest reason is because there's a few questions that goes off in her brain. The first thing that she says is she goes, well, I'm not that special. Like why me? This is, this is subconsciously what she's asking herself. She's saying, why me? I'm not that special. What's so different about me compared to other girls. You got to understand when you're in love with a girl or when you care about a girl, she does not view herself 
the way that you view her. She views herself like an average everyday human being going through life, eating, brushing her teeth, taking a shit, going out to uh, the bar with her girlfriends on a weekend. This is what she views herself as. So she goes, well, I'm not that special. Why me? What's so great about me? Why is he willing to invest in me? Uh, is there, is it the way I talk? Is it, but, but you gotta understand, she doesn't even like that she has that special undivided attention. She may tell you that she does, but watch her behavior start to change. Not only that, she's gonna sit there and go, well, I didn't think I'm that hot. I didn't think I was that hot. I didn't think I'm that attractive, right? If he thinks I'm that sexy, if he thinks I'm that attractive, and I don't even view myself like that, why doesn't he just, like, what, what's so great about me? And then, you know what happens is she starts to doubt your value. She looks at you and she goes, well, am I the best he can do? And then, you know what happens is hypergamy is not satisfied. And she goes, well, if I'm the best he can do, maybe I can do better. Look how attached he is. I don't feel that same way, right? And she's going to sit there and go, well, you know what? If he had multiple options or if he had other women at my level, he would, he would not be this attached to me because he would now be operating out of abundance. Now, one more question comes to her brain. Subconsciously, she goes, why does he put me on this pedestal when I hardly do anything for him? See, you're gonna notice the majority of the women that you commit to, when you actually look at it from like an outside level looking in, when you look at it from a, from a, like a, a full on 5,000 foot overhead view, Oftentimes they don't do anything that special. They don't do anything to really add a whole lot of benefit to your life, but you like them for who they are. You like their personality because you like them for that personality. These things start to trigger deep rooted emotional weakness in her brain. Now here's what happens. Okay. When you start to see that your care is a turnoff, your attachment that you have towards her starts to signal weakness. Say that with me one more time. Your attachment, starts to signal weakness. Now, this is very important to realize due to the fact that her biology is closing off to you. See, this is the one thing that most men have to understand, especially if you've had women exit your life, especially if you've been bitter. Like if you're a 40 year old, 50 year old, 60 year old guy who's watching this channel and you've had tons of relationships or tons of marriages and a lot of them went south, anything like that, here's what you gotta understand. It's not that girl's fault, it's her biology. Her biology is what's closing off to you. And the reason why I tell you that is because your attachment is signaling that weakness. She doubts your internal fortitude. She doubts what you're made of as a man. So what I'm trying, the point that I'm trying to get across is her biology looks at her and says to her, Hey, this dude is a bad bet for your survival, right? Her biology is going, we want the strongest cock. We want the strongest guy on the internal. We want the strongest guy on the external. We want the most stoic, resilient dude that we possibly can have who never falls weak to a woman's beauty, who never puts a woman before his purpose, who never puts a woman before his work. You see, this is what her biology is screaming at her. Her biology is screaming at her saying, hey, this guy's a bad bet for your survival and your potential offspring survival. So because of that, here's what you gotta know. It's backwards to how you view it. So your male brain is thinking logical. You think things are logical. You think logically. So what that means is since men oftentimes think logically and rationally, you think care or care towards a woman, caring about a woman, you believe that this equals love. Okay? That's a normal logical way to think about it. Not only that, you think care equals protection. You think, well, hey, if I care about something, if I care about someone, naturally they should know that I'm here to protect them. Naturally they should know that they're safe with me, which leads me to my next point. You think care equals safety. You're going to say to yourself, well, Hey, how do I make her feel safe with me? How do I give her a, how do I, how do I, how do I get her to view me as a man? If I don't love her, protect her and care about her because you think care equals love. You think care equals protection. You think care equals safety. This makes sense because your male logical brain is firing at you saying, Hey, this makes logical, rational sense. However, she does not view it this way. Say this with me one more time. She does not view it this way. She views it differently. It's backwards to how you view it. So what I mean by that is women fall in love with internal strength. So uh, when a woman sees these things, when a woman watches you care about her, when a woman watches you be emotionally invested in her or give lots of time, energy, and attention to her to make a relationship work, here's what happens. She doesn't view it this way. So women fall in love with the internal strength. That means she's sitting there going, well, he cares. He's getting emotional. He cares about me. He's getting emotionally weak. He cares 
Okay, he's working less. He's putting me before his other duties. She's going to look at him, care about me. Look at him, look at him, make me his number one priority. He cares. He's working less now. Okay, now he's putting me before his duties. He's putting me before his work. He's putting me before other things. He cares about me. Okay, he's making decisions out of emotion, not logic. Okay, when a, when a man goes weak for a woman, now all of a sudden the decision making process that you make, it starts to be driven out of emotion. What you're noticing is that most guys, what they do is they start to put her before everything else. So they start to plan their day differently. They start to structure their day differently. You're going to notice that when men make a big decision, if they're married, they say, Hey, I got to, I got to call and talk to the boss first. Okay. What you're going to notice is he will actually start to put her on this pedestal that makes her lose attraction. So he cares about her or she's sitting there going, he cares about me. Now he's working less. Now he's putting me before his duties. He's putting me before his work. He's operating out of emotion, not logic. He's a bad bet for my survival. Not only that, she's sitting there going, he can't protect me or my offspring. And you know what happens? Now she exits. Guys, I cannot stress this enough. Never under any circumstances, can you ever go weak for a woman's beauty? Say that with me one more time. Never under any circumstances can you ever go weak for a woman's beauty. The second you go weak for her appearance, the second you go weak for her beauty, the second you go weak for her soft feminine touch or her voice, her vocal tone, you get attached to those personality traits, you get attached to that feminine touch. This is when she exits. And it's not her fault. Her biology closes off to you. her biology is saying, you know what, this guy cares so much about you. Look at him change his decision making process. Look at him bend and break his principles that he once had. Look at him change his work environment and his work structure and his times that he does things throughout the day just to suit you. Look at this guy operate out of a different wavelength that he was prior. Now she's going to sense weakness. She's going to sense that you're changing for her. And now she's going to exit. You can never do this. So here's what you got to know. When you start to care about a woman, the reason why most guys can't spot these, you got to understand this is her withdrawal will be slow. Okay. Her withdrawal from you, her withdrawing from you is going to be slow. And the reason why it's going to be slow is because women are covert, which means she will pull away from you indirectly. She's never going to get mad at you. She's not going to get frustrated. She's not going to call you a bunch of mean names because you didn't do anything to deserve that. She's just going to slowly withdraw and it's going to come very indirectly. She's going to make all of these excuses why this is happening. But in actuality, you're going to sense that she doesn't like you the same way anymore. So here's what's going to happen. So when you notice that her withdrawal from you is going to be slow, what that actually means is that means she won't handle her disinterest that she has for you head on. She is not going to handle her disinterest that she has for you head on directly, meaning she's not going to call you. She's not going to text you and say, I don't think this is going to work, right? The, the, I don't see this going anywhere. I don't see a future with you. She's not going to say any of this. Here's what's going to happen. The first, the first thing that's going to happen is her phone responses are going to get slower. You're going to notice that the text messages are more infrequent. The text messages, there's bigger time delays. The phone calls, there's bigger time delays. Her responses get slower. Once that starts to happen, then the next thing that happens, number two, is she starts to set less plans with you. Before you guys maybe were seeing, you guys were dating for, let's say you were dating for a year and a half. You guys were dating for 18 months. Okay. You guys were seeing each other four or five days a week. Right now for a few weeks or a couple months in a row, you guys are only seeing each other two to three times per week. Okay. You're going to notice that she sets plans with you. Okay. And now those plans are less frequent. That's the second thing. Then what will happen? Number three is then the plans that she sets. Okay. She'll flake on them and then she'll tell you that something came up. So now you're hardly seeing her at all, right? And now what happens is the guy starts to chase harder. The guy pursues even harder. This is where the guy starts calling her and he's saying, what's wrong? What can I do to make this better? I feel like there's somebody else. Best belief, chances are this woman has probably been lining up her replacements for the past four to six months and she's been prepping herself. She's been emotionally leaving you. She's been emotionally detaching from you from anywhere for four to six months at this point. If you've been dating for about anywhere from a year to 18 months and she's ready to exit, this girl is getting the courage to exit you. 
Okay, and what that means is she's slowly distancing herself. The, the withdrawal is going to be slow, okay? Her intimacy and her sexual desire for you is going to slowly disappear until she finds a better option, until she's able to replace you. And then what happens is she's gone and you'll never see her again. And you're never going to talk to her again. And you're never going to know exactly what happened because you didn't read the signs. So what that means is there will be no questions. There will be no rhyme or reason. And she's going to confront none of it. She's not going to give you an answer. She's not going to give you a reason. She's not going to tell you what happened. She might just make excuses like, our hearts are in different places. Or, you know, I feel like you're just working all the time and you're gonna be sitting there scratching and going, oh my gosh, I've been making more time for this girl than I ever have in my life. And she's gonna come up with things like, I feel like I'm just not a priority. I feel like I'll never be good enough for you. I feel like you don't, you know, no matter what I do, it's not good enough. Okay, so what she's doing is she's going to make you jump through hoops and ladders verbally to convince you that it's something else when in actuality, she just doesn't like you anymore. Okay, so there will be no questions, there will be no rhyme or reason, she'll confront none of it head on, and then she'll just leave. And the reason why she's doing this is because she's hoping that you just take the hint. She's hoping that you just get it. She's like, oh, maybe if I just, maybe if I just do this indirectly, he'll just kind of get the hint and he'll go away and he'll leave me alone. And eventually he'll just stop texting me and stop calling me because I don't want him anymore. She's hoping that you just take the hint. So men are oblivious. Right, and this is where the guy says, oh my God, I saw this coming out of nowhere. I didn't see this, like, I, I was totally blindsided, right? He'll say, it came out of nowhere. This is what this guy will say. When in actuality, her withdrawal was just so slow, you didn't notice all of the red flags from the past. Now, to really drive this whole point home, so that way you can walk away from this with a positive light instead of a negative light, because you gotta understand, every guy who sees this presentation, including myself, we are all in the same boat. When I say we're all in the same boat, I don't care if you're Tom Brady, I don't care if you're Michael Jordan, I don't care if you're Channing Tatum, I don't care if you're Dr. Dre, I don't care if you're Leonardo DiCaprio, I don't care if you're Drake, I don't care if you're Chris Brown, I don't care if you're Casey, right? I don't care if you're a, a dude watching this in New York, you're a dude watching this in Pennsylvania, you're a dude, like it doesn't matter, we are all in this together. And the reason being is because hypergamy is a feeling. The second that you stop generating those hypergamous instincts that she has where she looks at you as if you are her best option, she is going to exit. Here's what I mean. Women only desire to have sex with men who do not get emotionally attached to them. Say that with me one more time. Women only desire to have sex with men who do not get emotionally attached to them. Now, the next guy that she's with, once she leaves you, the next guy she's with, a lot of times you're gonna be sitting there scratching your head going, what the hell just happened? Because what you're gonna notice is that you may even be taller than him, right? The next guy that she sleeps with, the next guy that she's with, you might even be taller than he was. The next guy that she sleeps with, you maybe even make more money than him. The next guy that she sleeps with, you may be better looking than him, okay? You may be better looking than him. So like, this is what guys focus on is like, well, who's she gonna get better? You gotta understand, none of this matters. It doesn't matter because hypergamy is a feeling. Hypergamy is not a statistic on paper. The guy who she's with next might be shorter than you, might make less money than you, and might be worse looking than you. But he instigates a feeling that you were not able to provoke. Say that with me again. He instigates a feeling that you were not able to provoke. He maybe was more playful. He maybe created more imagination with her. He maybe was able to say different things that get her to feel a wide range or a roller coaster of emotions. And truthfully, he was probably in a standpoint where he did not necessarily take her too seriously. Because he didn't take her too seriously, she wanted to fight for his time, attention, and approval at a deeper level to make him take her more seriously. You have to understand this. Hypergamy is a feeling that is not a statistic on paper. Eventually, she craves alpha cock. And alpha cock is cock that does not get attached. And this is what all women desire when it comes to the bedroom, okay? A guy that she can actually look up to. And I tell you this because what she's needing is she's needing a guy who doesn't necessarily need commitment from her. On top of that, this is a guy that she has to chase just to feel validated. A woman wants to feel validated. A woman wants to have to work for a guy's approval. This is the only way that you keep that hypergamous instinct satisfied by getting her to look up to you. 
Okay. And this is a skill that you need to learn and a skill that you need to understand because this isn't something that you can fix with your bank balance. This is you carrying yourself with the right frame, the right arrogant or the right cocky demeanor, the way where sometimes you act entitled, but you're also playful where you get a good a range of emotions out of her, right? Sometimes you're, you're super excited to talk to her and you guys have great chemistry. Other times you're more distant where she doesn't, she maybe doesn't hear from you for three, four, five, six, seven, eight days in a row. That's okay. Those feelings that cause her to pursue, that cause her to engage deeper into her emotions is exactly how women categorize love. Okay, to women, what you got to understand is imagination in girl world is the real world. To women, fantasy when it comes to girl world is the real world. Women will oftentimes do their absolute best to avoid the real world as much as possible. And the more you can gain that psychological imagination or play that she's desperately wanting, that keeps her emotions stimulated, this is what she falls in love with. Now, some of you, you might be saying, well, I just, I heard you say all this, Casey, and this sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, it is, but it also depends how you look at it. If you're a guy where you're not chasing commitment, if you're a guy where you tell yourself, I don't necessarily need to have a girlfriend, I'm the type of guy where I don't really care if I have a woman in my life or not, this is like the easiest thing ever. Because you gotta understand that when you commit to a woman, or when you enter into a relationship, you're gonna work three to five times as hard Okay, I would, I would probably say you're going to work 10 times as hard to maintain that woman's desire while getting five times less sex than you did when you guys were non-exclusive. So keep that in mind. These are the things when you just remove yourself and, and ima imagine how easy it is. Now all you do is you focus on time with your friends. You go focus on time with your hobbies. You go focus on time finally building that multi-million dollar business that you've told yourself for the past 10 years you were going to do but you still haven't. You go do things, right? that make it so you're living a life of social abundance, financial abundance, life abundance. Now a woman wants to come into that world because she's no longer your focus. So keep that in mind. A lot of times this stuff is way easier and you start to provoke thoughts of imagination and fantasy with a woman just by being distant, right? Just by being able to be a bit of a mystery because you're not necessarily sold on her or engaging in her or pursuing her. And this is very important because if you can operate like this, like you got to understand, they all respond to the same things. A girl who's a 10 out of 10 Victoria's Secret model, a lot of times is going to respond to the same types of things that like a, like a, a different girl would too, because they're all wired to chase guys or to, to, to be with guys and become attracted to guys who demonstrate these things that stimulate their emotions. She can't control it, right? It doesn't matter where she grew up or what her religious beliefs are. It doesn't matter what her background is. It doesn't matter if she's college educated or not. It doesn't matter if she's a professional or not. Like these things that she's attracted to, she can't control. These things that stimulate her arousal, she can't control. When you get a woman to invest and engage deeply into her emotions, she can't control that her attraction metrics are being stimulated. It just happens. It just happens to her. So those of you who make excuses for your past failed relationships, you got to understand you just didn't lay your cards properly. And if you can demonstrate these things that I'm teaching you on this marker board presentation, you will be miles ahead of 99% of all other men. If you like this video, I want you to hit the like button, comment and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.